John, obviously with a role like Mark, um, there's an obvious uh, physical challenge to tackling the part, but also I'd imagine there's an equally great uh, challenge to try and get into that kind of headspace, I guess, and trying to understand where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe you could tell me a little bit about how you prepared for both of those aspects. Sure thing. Uh, you know, Mark was a real life guy, and there's a short film uh, that was made about, a documentary made about his life called Breathing Lessons mm -hmm. by a woman named Jessica Yu, won the Academy Award in the late 90s. That was an amazing tool for me, uh, both physically, both for the outside and the inside of the part, but, but certainly uh, physically I was able to, to see Mark and, and uh, see uh, his, his, what his body uh, looked like uh, and, and how his voice sounded. Uh, those are things that I wanted to capture. Uh, normally I over prepare as an actor and make up a lot of details about the actor's life or physicality. Uh, these are things I didn't have to make up, it was true right there for me to study and try to emulate. And, and I also wanted to capture as much of Mark physically as I could because I wanted people who survive him to see as much of their friend or relative as possible in what I had done. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to really just get the physical side uh, figured out in a way that it felt second nature to me, that I wouldn't be listening to the sound of my voice or wondering what the body looked like as we were shooting so I could just forget all that and, and, and do what I always do as an actor which is to be you know present with the other actor in the scene trying to accomplish something. Uh, so uh, once the physical side was done uh, I, I had a lot of Mark's writings to, to lean on to, to l learn about his interior life. There were uh, people who survived him that I was able to, to speak to who knew Mark. Um, there's the script itself which is a wealth of information. Um, have pe yeah. Well, have people who knew Mark um, given you some feedback on, they have. on your performance? What's they it have. been like? Well, they may have just been being nice, but they, uh, <laughs> they uh, I, I think, felt like, like I did a pretty decent job capturing their friend. Um, I know that, uh, well, I've heard different things. It's embarrassing for me to relate them, but uh, I guess the, the, the greatest uh, compliment would be Jessica Yu, who made the film. Uh, seeing the movie and felt like uh, she told me afterwards that uh, in a very emotional way that it felt like spending spending an hour and a half with wow. with Mark who she knew very well so that was exciting. One of the things that's great about the movie that I certainly took away from was mm. that it just shows you or reminds you how absolutely vital it is to have a sense of humor as you mm. go through life. True. Um, I mean that for me is probably one of the biggest lesson of the film. I mean I'm just wondering are you kind of do you have a sense of humor about your own life or about certainly about your career or fame and things like that? Well, I try to, uh, you know, uh, Mark's situation was, was often, uh, to his mind, really, really absurd, and he, uh, I think that humor was a way to, to deal with a lot of the physical and emotional pain that, that uh, he, you know, necessarily dealt with in his life. Uh, I try to find, you know, there's the old adage that you play, uh, you try to find the comedy in, in drama, and you try to find uh, the, the uh, drama in the humor. Uh, so this piece ultimately could be very fraught, a very sad, very maudlin, uh, sentimental uh, story, but uh, it's not. It's told, I think, as you said, with a great deal of humor, and uh, that was something to try to capture for sure. Mm -hmm. It also kind of reminds you that the most important things in life are the most kind of simple things, just, just as much as uh, like how much we value touch and kind mm -hmm. of companionship and friendship, kind of simple things that you don't really see communicated in movies anymore. Stuff That's true. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, if you imagine a guy like Mark who through pretty much his whole life, I would believe, had been any touch that he uh, had encountered was uh, generally utilitarian, uh, you know, to be cleaned and bathed and shaved and fed and had his clothing changed and, and moved from one place to another. So I think uh, it must have been a real revelation for him when uh, he got together with Cheryl Cohen Green played by Helen Hunt in our film and, and actually experienced uh, touch for touch's sake and touch for, uh, for pleasure and, and, and touch for, for, uh, for love. Uh, it must have been a, a, quite, a, quite a revelation. Your scenes with Helen are very 
intimate and very you know you don't hold back either of you especially Helen I mean you really have to yes. tip your hat to her she does well, the word, I think the word brave is thrown around a little too but freely amongst using, acting performances yeah. but I feel like it applies here yeah. you know that, that it is a, a brave performance mm -hmm. in many ways and it must I mean our filming those things it is a purely technical thing I guess as actors but it must well, still normally be normally it is you know most uh, love scenes any actor will tell you are kind of by the numbers and you know uh, ultimately awkward and unfamiliar and full of nervousness and then ultimately edited with uh, you know the hand on the thigh and violins playing to look like the perfect fantasy whereas for us we Helen and I didn't know each other well there was an unfamiliarity and an awkwardness that that we embraced and and just kind of went with uh, we were lucky enough to shoot those scenes chronologically so not knowing each other well at the outset was great and also allowed us to capture something that that is unique to film which is uh, moments happening between two people on screen for the very first and only time captured a lot of what you see in, in that particularly that first surrogate scene are uh, are things that are surprising us both as, as we're as we're working uh, finally it must be a refreshing change of pace <laughs> For playing in mm. things like Winter's Bone and Martha, mm -hmm. Marcy May Marlene. Kudos for getting that sentence out. Um, well stated. I mean, are these kind of, do you like the, having this kind of chameleon like ability between slipping between these kind of roles? I don't really have a, a particular uh, method or mandate for, for what roles I choose. I'm just trying to find an amazing story that's well written, uh, a part in that story that matters to the story that's interesting to me, and, and really capable people to tell that story. So, if it's a lot of, of dark characters in a row, I'm not made nervous by that, or a lot of light ones. But, uh, you know, this one definitely had its its uh, challenges, but uh, I didn't really have to be uh, menacing or, or pretend that kind of darkness. Although Mark, you know, was a dark guy too. You know, there, there's, a, there's a lot there that uh, that was kind of heavy to, uh, to conceive of, but... You know, uh, I just see them all as human beings, and and it's up for up to others to, uh, to I guess, judge them or or uh, or kind of tell me uh, what they got out of it.